Welcome to Your Strength is Your Story podcast, a podcast about how your story on your journey through life, events, and activities is your strength. You are in control and how you tell it, where it leads to, and how it all ends. Own your story. Tell it well. Share it often. Let's stand proud and grow together by sharing our stories. Today, I will share one of my own stories, and that's right, you don't have to have just one story. We all have several stories going on at the same time, and I'm going to start with the very beginning of being a farmer's daughter and what that story actually is. So let me tell you this, right? Uh, raised to be tough, have a never give up attitude always pushing yourself until I had nothing left and then pushing just a little harder. And because I was the only daughter in the middle of two brothers, it was a driving force to outperform the boys because limitations are those you set in your own mind. This might explain why I am how I am and how my life has unfolded and in all of my other stories that I share with you in these future podcasts, how it unfolds. And I start with how I was born to a farmer and how hard work and good, strong work ethics was how I was raised because I believe it made me who I am. I was the daughter, so I had responsibilities in the house with chores of helping my mom with laundry, gardening, cooking, and cleaning. But what I really enjoyed most was my time outside in the barn, helping alongside my brothers with collecting the cows from the field for milking time, feeding and sweeping in the mangers, bottle feeding the calves, and cleaning up all the stalls. That's what I love to do. The long days of dad out in the field mowing or baling hay and then helping work the controls and spray and tuck the new bales after we wrap them, we all had our tasks that made things run smoothly. We all knew what our responsibilities were and that they all played an important part, no matter how small those tasks felt like my role of opening and closing the electric fence gate when they came through with another wagon full of round bales. Sure, it was boring, but how much time did it save my dad or my older brother not to have to stop the tractor, get off, open the gates, lay them down, get back on the tractor, drive through, get off the tractor, and do that whole process? I was there to make it all more efficient. At 13 or 14 years old, waiting at that fence was a pretty important job. Growing up, I was always told to be proud of what I do and the values that I add. Perhaps not in those words, but it's what I took from what they told me. I strive to always compete with my brothers, whether it's tossing bales, taming a wild cow to be halter led and not crying when scratched up and bruised after being dragged around the yard for 15 minutes, but holding on through those rope burns, trying to be strong and then tying it to a metal fence so it could pull against that for a bit and give me a break and learn that pulling isn't really going to help. And then after they're done pulling, take that halter and walk that cow calmly around the yard to show it that it's actually better. They get all the free grass on mom's clean lawn. They get to walk freely, right, with me like a puppy. Um, and that was my job, training the cows to lead. And I took pride in that. I was heavily into our local 4-H program as my mom was actually the leader. And for years I fit cattle and showed them and walked them around a ring at our county fairs and sometimes even making it to the state level. At the age of 12, and I pride myself on this, I won master showman um, in the state of New York and fourth master showman in the entire state. So I guess it was county level that I won overall master showman. But when I went to the state level, I went fourth in the state of New York. At 12, that's a pretty big deal. I was going against adults. It was my never give up attitude to make sure that my animal knew to do what I wanted it to do with the slightest movement on my hand or the slightest pressure of my hand on their shoulder to back up, to turn, to show themselves off for what they really were. I had my own herd and even named one of my own at her birth and owned her all the way up through college. Her name was Atwood Orchards Co-Reb, and she was born April 12th, 1992. I still remember that today because when you're showing cattle, that's the first thing the judge asks you when you enter the ring, who their dam was or their mother and their sire, their father. 
and when they were born to make sure the size matched. And I knew it because I named her Atwood Orchards Co. Reb to remind me that her mother's name was Atwood Orchards Coco, and her father was a Canadian bull named as Pupilaire's Rebel. And to compare size, of course, I gave him the birth date. At the age of 43, I still know this information, as at 12, I ingrained it in my mind that that is what I needed to know when I walked in that ring. And I needed to know it no matter how nervous I was, no matter how many bigger people, better cows were in that ring, I had my information. I raised Cole Reb from a calf and all the way to be an aged cow. She had several calves, some we kept, some we sold and had to let go. It was the nature of the beast of farming. It costs money to feed them. And if they weren't producing milk and making us money, they had to move on. I still remember the day that I had applied to several colleges and had actually gotten accepted into Clarkson University in Potsdam, New York. It was my moonshot goal of a college, one I thought I'd never get into, could never afford even if I did get accepted, but it would be that confirmation that I needed that I could do big things, that I could actually maybe make it into a college like Clarkson University. So I was accepted. And I didn't get accepted on my grades, which were mediocre at best, but it was for my essay. It's the way I told my story. And it was the rigors of being a farmer's daughter and the responsibilities of working on a farm to help support my family, but also being a herdsman and raising my own cattle and what it meant in terms of um, giving up and being responsible for things. I had to give up doing some activities with friends to be home on the farm, responsible for those animals. I had to come home after school, get my homework done and those chores. I guess I wrote a pretty good essay telling my story because it got me accepted into Clarkson University. This was a turning point where I learned that my story was my strength. I got in, but how do I actually get there and make my dreams a reality? A program called the Higher Education Opportunity Program, or HEOP, read my essay as well and knew that since I was a farmer's daughter, perhaps needed assistance. And they offered me a full scholarship minus some small fees that I needed to cover on my own, but took an unrealistic goal of shooting for the stars and put it in my lap. I remember when we learned of the opportunity and with a few small loans I could personally take out each year, they would cover my tuition, my room, my board. My father wept. I was the first in my family to want to and succeed at going to college. I was going to make something of myself. What that was still unknown, but the potential was there and I was given the opportunity. I seemed it seemed that hurdles were placed in front of me at every turning point because the next step was buying a computer because you can't go to college without a computer and one that needed to do certain tests and handle certain programs. And back in 1998, it was all about the IBM desktop and I ran into a cost of $5,000. Now came the tough decisions, the ones that would mold all future decisions and how I make them. I needed money. And for farmers, when they need money, they sold their livestock. What livestock did I have? I had my herd of show cows. I didn't have many at this time, but I had Coreb. Um, it was a long discussion with my parents, and it came down to having to enter her into an auction and sell her. We entered her. She was listed in the sale book, and she was pretty and could win shows, but I knew she wasn't a milk producer. She was more of a fun show pet for me and not a real producer. Still, the auction house thought that she could sell and for pretty penny if I sold her as a show cow. They wanted me to show her in the ring because she walked and looked better when I was at the other end of the halter, but I simply couldn't. I sat in the crowd next to my dad, and as they announced her name and the auctioneer started calling out bids, I could feel the tears welling in my face and streaming down my cheeks. She was my favorite. We had a connection, but my future journey didn't include being a farmer. It included going to college for marketing and marketers don't need cows. As I sat there with my head hanging down and simply a wreck, I heard the numbers coming in and it was going up and up 2000, 2,500. And then I felt my father shift in his chair and his arm went up. What was he doing? 
the auctioneer stopped and said, Mr. Russell, this already is your animal. Do you wish to pull her? And I looked up to see him nod yes. They walked her out of the ring. He turned to me and he said, she's yours. You keep her as long as you want her. We'll find another way. I don't even remember what that other way was, but I got to keep my cow that day. And as I sit here sharing my story with you today with a master's in marketing, well, all knowing it was a happy ending to this particular story. You want to learn about what came of CoReb? Let me know and perhaps we'll continue another episode of Your Story is Your Strength. Until next time, be sure to own your story and share it often.